Hello, everyone. Yeah, My no, name is Nanjia. I'm from Purdue University. Today, I would like to talk can about this what. Quick, can everybody see the slides and hear them? Yeah, we hear it now also very loud. So, I think the. Well, yeah. A randomized also algorithm for massive text normalization. This work is an internship project done at Amazon Search. I would like to mention Chen Vihan for providing a lot of you. Hmm? Sorry? Uh, can you guys hear and see everything? Yeah, we see and hear everything. I think you can just play it now. Perfect. Thank you. Useful advice. And also, this is mentored by Yesh and Yeshan. This project mainly talk about lexical normalization. It means the process of processing non-standard informal or misspelled token into standard counterpart. It also may cover converting words of past tense or future tense or word of plural form into a consistent and unified representation. So this lexical normalization Really, many, many appear when users are typing on a small keyboard on your phone, and also when you want to search some product on the search engine or the product website. It will help you to find all those the ideal words you are going to search. When we look at the current algorithm for lexical correction, we notice there are some some bottlenecks. They cannot. They cannot solve it properly. So the first thing is the data set we are using on the mobile computing or social network, they contain a lot of lot amount of typos compared with all the all the data set we are using on those on those compared with sorry, compared with all the model we are using with clean data set. Another thing is the deep learning model cannot is not processing it properly. For all the typos, they will be mapped to the same token, UNK, noting these words are unknown to, to the machine learning model. And the other one is if you want to train a data a large model for lexical correction, then we have to use human annotation, which is quite expensive. The last one is we noticed that the existing algorithm for lexical correction they are relatively slow when we want to clean up the, a when we want to clean up massive data set. Our contribution, as we are going to show in the next few slides, is that our algorithm is adaptive to diverse domain, and also our algorithm does not require annotation or supervised learning. Also, because we are using a most recent variant of locality sensitive hashing. It allows us to process the computing of word similarity as fast as word reading time. So to give you a concrete sense of what we mean by similar word, here in this context we mean two words that share a lot of subword, then they are tend to be the same word. So this is actually a generalization from the clock sense of morphology in linguistic. Morphology basically analyze the structure of the word, prefix, stems, or suffix, which means if two words share prefix, stem, and suffix, then they should be the same word. Here we relax it to accept to accept a word on large data set. To give you a concrete sense, here's an example. The first part of the first group of the word is all those words with amazing. The second group word group of word is good, goose, and nose. At least purely by looking at the word string, we can notice that the first group of words should be similar to each other. We saw that they have same, which means they should have same meaning. And the first group and second group they are distinct because we find they share. Share nearly zero subwords. So here's an architecture of our proposed algorithm, Flang. The first step, what we do is convert all the input word into a hash value. And the second step we do is mapping all the words with the same hash value 
into a click in the graph. The third step is by looking at the graph, we can extract the vocabulary and the lexical correction. The last step is what we want to handle those testing cases during inference. To be specific, let's go back to the first step. The input word is good with a typo zero in between. And then we are going to split it into a set of software and it will go through a hash pipeline. Finally, we will get a hash, hash value five for the input word. And the second, in the second, then let's then move to the second step. Other word with the same hash value, which is good with three O, good, good with the correct word, and good with zero in between. They are in the same connected component. Similarly, it can we can check that the infant, infant plus D, G plus infant, I plus infant, they are connected in the in the other connected component. By by looking at the graph, we notice that we can extract the vocabulary out from it. The first, let's just look at the first component. We find that the word good has appeared quite frequent in the data set when we compare to the other two words. So we are safe to say that good should be the correct form and the other should be some typos. So we use the leading words in every connected component and we it, they compose a vocabulary and all the other words, they should be considered as lexical corrections. That's why we can go to the third step. We can have a vocabulary and then with all the lexical corrections. The last step is during inference, there are still some, some words that are not covered by the training set or validation set. So instead of throwing it away, we wanted to check if this word has a high probability to map to the vocabulary. Here is a word with zero in between, and then we find that the good it has a likelihood of mapping to good or mapping to goods or mapping map, mapping to knows, and the, and we will figure out the add weight with we will figure out the mapping with highest add weight so that after that the the word g o o with zero in between will be mapped to the word in the win with the correct word in the vocabulary. I would like to mention some remark, which is the defect of the locality sensitive hashing algorithm. So if we want to processing a median word, then the probability of a non-relevant word is collected with a group of similar words become huge, meaning they are, by using the algorithm, we can find it sometimes include all a dissimilar word. This will clearly make the algorithm become not, not that good. So we propose a stabilization algorithm, which means we are going to run the first step several for t times, and then this all and then we map all map them to the to the graph. Now we have a different meaning for the edge weight. The so edge weight become weighted represent the number of times these two words are mashed are hashed into the same bucket. We now we can safe to say that if these two words has a high edge weight in between, then they are tend to be similar. If these words have a really low edge weight or no edge weight, then they should be distinct. This stabilization algorithm allow us to attain some attain a good performance on the experimental part. So before we looking at those numerical score, I would like to give you a real sense on the output of the algorithm. Here's what we get from the Twitter dataset. The first column is the, the representative word that, that is picked by the algorithm. The second column is all the other similar word, which is considered to be similar to the first column. And suppose we look at the first, first row there, and we find all those words similar, there with a a hat, there with a and i there, and there are, they are quite similar to the first representative word. Notice that there are some counter cases that we cannot cover by this LSH algorithm. For example, a word 
with bike and and another word is Nike. And this word has only one this one character difference, but they have distinct distinct meaning. We we think of it these two words can require some context meaning. So we will leave these cases for future studies. And one important thing we care about is can this algorithm handle large scale data set? So we pick two data set. Twitter data set contains 1.6 million of tweet and the other Reddit data set contains 10 million sentences. We find out that our algorithm is faster than all those cl classic algorithm. We notice that the Hans spell and autocorrect are using added distance model and the glove and fast text what we are using here is considering what similarity on the embedding embedding model. The Pharisees are used here because we want to check if the nearest neighbor algorithm can be can help improving the processing time. And then another thing we care about our algorithm can suggest high quality corrections. So we use the same input for each of the algorithm and then we extract the output. We do a questionnaire and post it on Amazon Mechanic Turk. Those native speaker will evaluate if the current correction is good, bad, or not sure. So we summarize the result and compute the precision recall and F1 score on top of it. What we can find is as our algorithm attained a good performance on recall and the overall metric F1 score. And after that, the, the, not, the next thing is, after we get a um, clean the data set, does that mean the learning, the learning result will be different? So we evaluate the differences after cleaning on those downstream tasks. The first task is a group benchmark because here we notice that the group benchmark using quite clean data set. So we tweak a little bit, increase, perturb the sentences in the data set with different noise rate. Here we um, have noise rate 20%, 40%, and 60%. Compared to the other algorithm, we can find that our algorithm can attain relative, rel relative improvement when we have when the noise rate get higher, our algorithm improvement get higher. The second application is Twitter sentiment classification task. So Twitter sentiment classification is coming from the real typo. Before that, it is coming from all those not existing typos. So on this, on the Twitter sentiment classification task, we notice that the hung spell and autocorrect are actually hurting the performance. The reason we find is that the, these two algorithms are using added distance, mapping them to the standard English. And we notice that the Twitter is using a different set of English. The other one is glove and fast task. We find that it has a relative small improvement compared to the baseline. We find that they actually suggest less word because they, they, they don't find all those words can be corrected identified by the word embedding model. So our algorithm, when compared to this baseline, attain a 0.1 improvement on the validation and then 0.2 improvement on the testing. Here are the two references about the baseline we are using. I'm now happy to answer all the questions. Thank you for listening.